Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Six Chardonnays in front of me today, three from Burgundy, three from uh, three other countries. I'm starting with the Burgundies because I'm, I suppose I'm expecting them to be a bit lighter, a bit more subtle, I don't know. Only one way to find out, let's just dig in. First one I've got, Saint Véran, um, and uh, it's a 2010 Saint Véran, uh, made for, I think it's for Naked Wines, by Dominic Hentol. Uh, let's give it a whirl. Now, somewhere around from uh, the uh, what they call the Maconnet, uh, it's a southern southernmost bit of uh, Burgundy, uh, and um, so the wines there tend to be maybe a little bit uh, fuller and fleshier than uh, some of the ones for, further north in, in the Cote d'Or and certainly in Chablis. Uh, may, may, maybe not fleshy, but certainly friendly, a less a less sharp, less aggressive. And here, so it feels, feels like it's going to have uh, quite a bit of softness, uh, rounded, slightly cooked apple flavour, and uh, with a little bit of um, what I call undercooked cake mix. If you, you know, if you make a, a cake and there's a little bit in the middle that's not quite set, that's, that's some of that sort of uh, doughy, no, not doughy, but um, yeah, cakey character. I know what I mean. Pretty tasty as well. I mean, not not the most complex of wines, but it's got uh, it's got it's rounded, juicy fruit, and uh, just to stop it all getting too rounded and too flabby, uh, there's this acidity keeping it all fresh, holding it together. I'm not sure whether they've used any oak here, but uh, um, but uh, doesn't say anything about oak on the back. But it feels it feels like it's it's the fruit that's coming through. Fruit mixed with a sense of place. So it, it's um. Pretty, pretty nice introduction to uh, to this row. Let's see what wine number two is like. Uh, wine number two is uh, Domaine Parigo Merceau Les Vireux de Sioux. Uh, not a Grand Cru or a Premier Cru. There aren't any Grand Crus in Merceau. Uh, not even a Premier Cru, but uh, what they, they call a Lier D. Anyway, let's give it a whirl. Well, that smells terrific. Um, it's got this um, it's slightly briny edge to it, um, what I call the benevolent spent match. If you remember, remember firing cap guns, it's got some of that cap gun uh, type of character. Uh, and then behind it feels like it's got uh, apple, lemon, that type of fruit flavours. Uh, but um, it, one of those it's really hard to take apart. It just feels like a lovely harmonious single entity. Let's taste it. And pretty tasty that is too. Um, it's a lovely balance. Uh, it, uh, the, the fruit, I mean, Merceau is often thought of as being one of the uh, fleshier styles of wine in the in the Cote d'Or, but here it feels. I, I, I'd have been hard pushed to put that as Merceau. I'd, I'd have put it more on the Pulini side. I don't know whether the, uh, that particular vineyard abuts uh, the the, um, the the Pulini border. But there is this uh, just lovely, precise acidity, mineral touches, this saltiness, and this uh, this spent match flitting in and out and um, maybe there's a, a, there's a little bit of oak there that, uh, that just needs to calm down a little bit more but um, pretty terrific wine actually. Um, I might have another sip of that. We like that. Uh, let's see whether we like, like uh, the, the next one which is also Merceau um, and this is uh, Louis Latour uh, 2009 uh, Merceau Blani. The first one was um, as I say just a Lier D. This one is a Premier Cru Chateau de Blani um, and let's give it a whirl. Well, this is odd. This it's uh, it's got something of uh, that slightly savoury, salty tang that the previous one had. But there's also this uh, fatter, buttery edge behind it as well. Um, doesn't feel like it's going to be as uh, high in the cheekbones as the previous one. Feels like it's going to be a, a fuller style. Um, it's it's weird. It almost, it's almost like there's two wines in in here. There's a, uh, a yeah a, a, a savoury, taut one and this plumper one. I don't know what's happened there. Anyway, maybe wrong. Let's taste it. And it's almost like there's two wines jousting in your mouth. There's the uh, precise, more minerally uh, edge, uh, but then, um, which is the, the bit you get to start with, and then the more, more it lingers in your mouth, the more this fatter, richer, buttery, slightly, uh, slightly clunky, clumsy style comes through. Uh, and that's what you're left with on the finish. Uh, a bit of, and it, it, it does feel like there's some acidity keeping it all fresh and more coherent than it otherwise would be, but... Um, uh, not a patch on the previous one, despite its uh, its Premier Cru status. Hey, so that's our three Burgundies. Let's move on. Uh, three different countries, as I say, for the rest of them. Uh, first one we have got is Hahn. Uh, we are in uh, Monterey in California here. Uh, so this is the Hahn Chardonnay 2011. Let's just give it a whirl. Um, not, <laughs> it's a hard act to follow the, the those two Mersos, and particularly with that slightly richer end on that uh, uh, on the Louis Latour. Here I stick my nose in, and there's a slightly sweet, crude vanilla character that I'm getting. Um, it feels like the, it doesn't feel like fruit's overripe or anything like that, but um, 
uh, I uh, yeah I miss a little bit of a poise and it feels like it's going to be sort of like a sort of slightly friendly but uh, simple style and that's what it is friendly simple um, I think they've overdone the oak there I, I, that, that vanilla character uh, tends to dominate for for me and when it has gone you just wish the fruit behind was a little bit more uh, zesty and precise. It's OK. Uh, let's see whether we are OK with uh, wine number five, which uh, we're in Chile with uh, De Martino uh, 347 Vineyards. Golly, that's a lot. Uh, 2010 vintage. And is it Limery? Uh, yes, it's Limery. So let's give this a whirl. Yeah, I've just looked on the back and it says unoaked. And uh, certainly after the slightly clunky style of the previous one. This feels like it's going to be uh, fresher and leaner. Uh, but it, it also smells a bit simple. I mean, it, it, it smells okay, uh, but apple and lemon jelly um, doesn't feel... I, I, I don't get... I, I, I can taste re something of the, of the varietal, uh, but um, I, I miss a little bit of a sense of the soil. Perfectly decent, perfectly pleasant. Um, step up from the previous one. Um, but as I say, I miss it. It's it, it just it's simple. Um, it's a it's it, it's a more complex sort of simplicity than the previous one. If that makes sense, feels like there's more concentration now. And it's it's okay. Um, it's uh, it's certainly got more fruit concentration than the previous one. Um, and uh, but if anything, it it it, it is the, the flavours. There really isn't all that much beyond that uh, that slight jelly edge to the uh, apple and citrus. Um, and um, doesn't feel like they've gone over the top with uh, any lees aging or anything like that. It's okay, uh, but uh, I wish it spoke more of a place. Uh, hey, let's try uh, see if we get a sense of place in the final wine, which is uh, from uh, Marlborough, New Zealand, and it's the Grey Wacky uh, Chardonnay 2010. Grey Wacky is uh, Kevin Judd's label, and um, let's give this one a whirl. Now I'm getting some of that spent match character I was getting in that uh, that first Merso, um, and uh, it feels like maybe the wine behind isn't quite as uh, complex, but um, it still it smells it smells pretty good. Um, uh, so there's a juiciness to it. Uh, maybe it, it, it feels like it's going to have a richer fruit flavour. I think this is the highest alcohol. I think it said 14.5%. Um, but um, with a precision as well. Keep on using this word precision. I mean, for me, um, if you've got a Chardonnay and it's just sort of like big and bloated, um, then it can be okay uh, in small doses. But I want my wines, I want to be able to uh, uh, to see the, the, uh, uh, the support network, if you want to call it that. And I always think of, um, of, of wines as having uh, a skeleton and flesh. And uh, I prefer things where I don't want skeletal wines, uh, but I don't want sort of lardy bloaters. Uh, I want to, I want, I want, and I prefer something on the sleek, elegant side, precise, um, rather than something that has got maybe muffin tops. And it's carrying its 14.5% alcohol very nicely. Um, yeah, I would, I would have put it um, at least a degree lower. Um, uh, yes, I mean, I, I said it's uh, reminiscent of that, that, that spent match character in the Merceau. Maybe the, the wine has not got quite the depth and um, uh, certainly not the length of flavour that, uh, that the Merceau's got. But it's a darn good drink. Um, and um, uh, what, what's good about it is uh, some Marlborough Chardonnays, in fact some New Zealand wines in general, can be almost too fruity. Uh, they, there are, there's fruit and then you get beyond the fruit and it's sort of like, uh, what's next? Here, uh, there is plenty of life beyond fruit. So there, there is this salty tang, a bit of that spent match. And, um, and yeah, they, they said that maybe there's a little, something slightly more exotic, but not exotic tropical fruit. I'm talking about exotic maybe rhubarb and uh, uh, rhubarb, maybe even a bit, a bit of plum in there, but the citrus and, and, and the apple as well. Uh, second favourite, I would say, but uh, the um, uh, the Merceau, uh, the first Merceau is the is the class act for me. I didn't mind the Saint-Varan either, but um, interesting set of six wines, uh, and I will see you soon. <laughs>